in this lecture we will discuss about the basic electric circuit laws which are used for the simplification of or analysis of the complex electrical networks in that first of all we have the kirchhoff's current law and its associated analysis which is also known as nodal analysis so this particular lecture discusses about the kirchhoff's current law and what is nodal analysis how to solve an electrical network using nodal analysis and then we will take up one numerical problem to understand the whole concept now what is kirchhoff's current law so before proceeding to kirchhoff's current law basically kirchhoff's laws of or pair of laws were given by a german physicist whose name was gustav kirchhoff in 1845 he gave a pair of laws pair of rules which have been used or which are used since then to solve or simplify the complex electric networks when we say to solve a network we actually mean to say to find out the currents or um, in any branch or voltage across any circuit element in a given electrical network right now now so these two laws basically deal with two laws of physics which are law of conservation of energy and law of conservation of charge right so electrical circuits do have the law they, they follow the law of conservation of energy and law of conservation of charge and these pair of laws which were developed by kirchhoff are kirchhoff's current law and kirchhoff's voltage law so in today's lecture we will discuss about kirchhoff's current law and its associated analysis which is used to simplify the given electrical networks kirchhoff's current law is also known as the first law given by kirchhoff and it is also known as kirchhoff's junction rule because it is applied on the junction of an electrical network now what is a junction of electrical network let us say there are three elements which are meeting at a point let us say there are three resistances r1 r2 and r3 which are meeting at this particular point so this we call as junction okay junction is basically a point in the electric networks where three or more than three elements are connected so this is what uh, a junction is junction is also known as the principal node so we also call it as a principal node right so kirchhoff's current law is also known as kirchhoff's junction rule because it is applied on the junction of a given network and it is applied to understand the conservation of charge means it is indirectly related to the law of conservation of charge right so it states that this particular law states that or this particular rule states that on any given junction or principal node of an electrical network the net charge here is conserved 
so net charge is conserved at the junction of a network electrical network we can also define kcl as that the algebraic sum of the currents meeting at a junction in an electrical network is zero right in an electrical network is zero or we can also say that the net current the net current on a junction in an electrical network is zero now for example if there is some current coming to this particular junction let us say it is i1 now what is current current is the rate of change of charge the rate at which charge is flowing in the conductor right that gives us current and charge here is nothing but electron so flow of electron basically okay so it is nothing but flow of electron right now let us say i1 is the current coming here and let us say i2 is the current in this branch and let us say i3 is the current in this branch so that means some charge is coming to this particular junction and some charge is leaving this junction so at this particular point the whole charge is conserved it is neither you know created nor lost okay so whatever charge you have at this junction coming from this point this end will be equal to the sum of charge which is leaving this particular junction so that is related to the current now so we can say that if the charge is conserved at this junction so that means sum of the currents at this junction is zero sum of all the currents at this junction is zero so we can also say indirectly that the net current at this junction is zero right so this is what kcl is kirchhoff's current law which is also known as kirchhoff's junction rule and it basically signifies the law of conservation of charge it states that at any junction in the given network the total charge is conserved or we can say that the total electric current on any junction is zero right now what is an algebraic quantity because we have said we have mentioned here in this slide about the algebraic sum now what is this algebraic sum is so algebraic sum is basically the sum of various quantities in which we have also considered the direction of the quantity along with its magnitude right so to understand kirchhoff's current law let us take this diagram here there is one junction this is the junction because there are certain branches so this is let us say branch 2 this is branch 1 this is branch 3 and let us say this is branch 4 so there are let us say four branches which are meeting at this particular point which is which we, which we call as junction this junction is also known as principal node right now we can see that we have certain currents which are leaving some currents are entering leaving and entering okay now if we apply the kcl principle and kcl principle says that the sum of all the currents or we can say the algebraic sum of all the currents at a junction in an electrical network is zero so that means algebraic sum is let us say i1 is plus then minus i2 then plus then minus i3 or yes minus i3 and plus i4 is equal to 0 now why i have taken this as a negative why this is negative now my question is why 
I3 and I2 are negative in this case. Why not I1 and I4? So the simple answer to this question is that there is no thumb rule that which particular direction you have to take as positive and which particular direction you have to take as negative. It is totally up to you. Okay. Positive and negative are in a relation with one another. They are relative. So they are relative basically. Okay. If you are taking one particular direction as positive, so other, the counter direction will be taken as negative, right? So if we are taking the incoming current as positive, okay, so obviously the outgoing current will become negative. So there is no thumb rule for the direction of the current around a junction, right? So there is no thumb rule. Okay, so if we have taken one particular type of current, as I mentioned earlier, also positive, the other type of other current will become negative. So if the incoming current is taken as positive, then the outgoing current will become negative. So this is it. This is very, very simple, uh, fundamental, very simple rule for this plus and minus. Okay. So now when we see that by applying KCL, we have got this particular equation, which is given here, right? So you have this equation, let us say this is equation number one, this is equation number two, right? Now in this equation, you have I1, I4 because they are incoming current. So we have taken them as positive and I2 and I3 are outgoing current. So we have taken them as negative. Now when we add them, we will see that the sum of the incoming currents is equal to sum of the outgoing currents. So this leads to a new kind of definition for the Kirchhoff's current law, which says that the sum of all the currents coming to a junction, the sum of all the currents coming to a junction, let us say I1, I2, I3, I4, and I5. So sum of all the currents coming to a junction is equal to sum of all the currents leaving that junction. So this is what KCL state, right? So here sum of currents I, I, I for incoming. So it is equal to sum of currents O, O for outgoing, right? I for current, O for outgoing. This is a summation mark here. This one is a summation mark, right? So here we are not using algebraic sum because now it is understood that incoming currents are positive. So all the incoming currents will be added and outgoing currents will also be added, but they will be equated basically. You will equate them, okay? But in this equation, you have not equated, you have taken all the sum equal to zero as per the definition of Kirchhoff's current law. Okay, so now there are three definitions we can say. The first is that Kirchhoff's current law state that the algebraic sum of all the currents meeting at a junction in an electrical network or circuit is zero, or we can say that the net current, net current, not the total current, basically it is net current, uh, on a junction in an electrical network is zero. Or we can also say that sum of all the currents which are entering a junction, which are coming to a junction is equal to sum of all the current which are leaving the junction. Okay, so from here you can also uh, prove one more thing. For example, guys, if you take the outgoing current as positive, if you take outgoing current as positive and incoming current as negative. So let us take 
outgoing current as positive and incoming current as negative so what will happen incoming current will be added like this so they will be added minus i1 plus minus i4 uh, plus i2 plus i3 is equal to 0 so if you simplify this equation it will give you i1 plus i4 is equal to i2 plus i3 so the answer is same right so in any condition whatever direction you take whatever you know sign convention you take for whichever direction of the current ultimately it will lead to the same kind of response response does not get affected right now let us come to the nodal analysis now kirchhoff's current law has an application which we mathematically or you know theoretically call as nodal analysis so nodal analysis is one such method which is used to simplify uh, a given electrical network so uh, wherein we use uh, the kirchhoff's current law so if if you are asked where the kirchhoff's current law is used so you can say it is used um, in nodal analysis to simplify the uh, complex electrical networks now what is the ultimate purpose of uh, nodal analysis the ultimate purpose is to uh, determine the branch currents basically so um, they are used to find out the branch current so using branch currents you can ultimately find out the voltage across any circuit element let us say resistance or capacitor inductor uh, because in this particular unit we are dealing with the dc circuits only wherein we are taking only resistances so we will confine ourselves to the uh, resistances right so we can find out the voltage across any resistance in a network we can find out the power uh, dissipation across any resistance of the given network using a uh, nodal anal analysis right okay so what is nodal analysis so nodal analysis is a method which is used to determine the branch current in an electrical network now what is a branch branch as we already discussed which is extended from one principal node to another principal node right so it is extended from one principal node to another principal node So one, right. So this is one branch to second branch, third branch, fourth branch, fifth branch, sixth branch. So there are like this. So which is extended, which is connected between two principal nodes is known as uh, the branch, right? So we have to find out the branch current, right? Hence it is used to solve the complex network, right? In this method, one of the node is taken as a reference node. This is very important. And the reference node is always uh, kept at zero potential, ground potential, right? So um, reference node is kept at ground potential. So we take that particular node or that particular junction as the reference junction, which um, seems to be at the uh, zero voltage or zero potential right now the potential of all the points in the circuit are measured with respect to this reference node when we say points we actually mean to say the uh, principal nodes right so points here mean the principal nodes right so hence nodal analysis essentially aims at choosing a reference node in the network and then finding the unknown voltages at the independent nodes with respect to reference node. Now, what is this independent node that we will understand? What is this? Reference nodes, node, what is this? So how to select a reference node, right? So to do this whole analysis, we make use of Kirchhoff's current law, KCL. So KCL has an application here, right? So, <clears throat> Uh, your nodal analysis is also known as node voltage method because um, this particular analysis is used to determine the voltages at the independent junctions or nodes of the given electrical network. So we find out, we determine the node voltages. Now, what is a node voltage? That also we will understand. Okay, how do we find out the node voltage using um, nodal analysis that we will understand in next slide, right? So now let us come to the procedure 
which is uh, used to find out the branch currents and thereafter you can find out the voltage drop or like that okay so there are four general steps basically there are four major steps or general steps or which are generally used um, you know to find out the node voltages in the given electrical network okay and these are the first is you have to identify the principal nodes you have to identify the number of principal nodes that you have now as i already mentioned that a principal node is nothing but a junction and a junction is the one a point basically where three or more than three branches of an electrical network are connected right now among all those principal nodes we will uh, um, you know select one reference node basically because this reference node uh, will be used uh, as a reference uh, of the voltage or potential with respect to which we will uh, either determine or assume some voltage on the principal nodes okay now as it is mentioned here also so i have kept double star so you can see so this is double star here so principal node is the one where three or more than three branches are connected which is also known as junction right now once you have identified the principal nodes you have identified the reference node now you will uh, label all the nodes with some voltage okay we do not know the voltage at any node right let us say we do not know the voltage at any node of the junction now when i'm using the word node here i actually mean to say junction i actually mean to say principal node right now these parameters principal as so the voltage at any principal node or any junction is unknown to us so what are the unknown parameters so unknown parameters are node voltages and branch current so these are the unknown parameters which we find out so once you have identified all the nodes now you what you will do you will give some label some marking to the uh, or you can you will assume some voltage at every junction of the network every principal node of the network with respect to the reference node right okay so reference road node because is is kept at ground so it will always be taken as zero at zero volt right now um except the reference node all other principal nodes are also known as independent nodes or junctions right so reference node is basically uh, known as the dependent node right this is the dependent node basically its voltage is fixed basically its voltage is fixed okay now the first step is you identify the nodes second is you um, assume certain voltage at every principal node with respect to the reference node and third general step is that we will write the nodal equations of each principal node except that of reference node okay now what is a nodal equation how to write nodal equation so nodal equations are written by applying uh, kirchhoff's current law at every junction and then we apply ohm's law to get the Uh, v by r equivalent of that current equation so in step 3 what we are actually doing we are determining the um, current equation of every junction and that we determine by applying kirchhoff's current law and then we apply ohm's law and on that particular current equation so that we can get uh, an equivalent v by r of that uh, equation and then in last step what we do we solve these nodal equations to get the node voltages which are the unknown parameters and by using these node voltages we can find the current flowing through any element and the voltage across any element that is present in the given network by using these node voltages right so now let us come to a numerical 
in this numerical, as you can see, we have <clears throat> two voltage sources, this and this, three resistances. Okay, so we can say two active elements and three passive elements. Now, how many nodes are there? One A, B, C, D, this one, this one, this one. And how many principal nodes are there? So there are two, okay, B and D, uh, sorry. B and D, right? But B is taken as reference node or reference junction. Now, how we have taken D as a reference junction because we can see here these three you know, points are at same potential. At same potential, All right? Secondly, this is the negative terminal of the battery, negative terminal, so it is connected here. So we can take this as the reference node and we can ground this point, right? So in this particular network, we have to calculate the current through 20 ohm resistance using nodal analysis. So the method that we have to use is mentioned here and the branch in which we are finding the current is 20 ohm and the 20 ohm resistance is R2. So guys, remember one thing, the branch in which you are asked to find out the current is assumed to be the load resistance. If, if I ask you which one is the load resistance, R1 or R3 or R2. So you can simply say that R2 is the load resistance because only here we have been asked to find out the current, right? So this is a load resistance for us in this case as of now. Let us come to the next slide. Now, step one, let us solve this. So let us solve this network. Right. So what is step one? So step one here. Now I will not take those general steps. I'll try to create some steps and write here. The first step is check the number of principal nodes or junctions. Right. So here we have two junctions, uh, this one and this one. What is a junction? Junction is a point where three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So three branches are connected, right? So here we have, you know, two junctions, two principal nodes. So one of them, is a reference node that is D. So B and D are two uh, principal nodes. So out of this, we have D as a reference node, right? The first thing is this one. Second step is now, second step here is that we will give some label to this particular node in terms of voltage. We will assume certain voltage on this node except the reference node. So reference node in this case is a grounded point. So this is grounded. Hence, V is equal to zero here. So step two, what you will do is let us assume that 
VB is the voltage at junction B. Step three is let us assume or take current at this junction. Right. So now in this case, uh, we are free to take any direction of the current at junction B. So what does it mean? It means that you can take any direction of the current. Either you can take, like in this case, we have R1 here, then we have a junction B, then we have R3, and then we have R2. So either you can take all the currents coming to this junction, or you can take all the currents are going away from this junction, or you can take any direction. You are totally free. You are totally free, right? The ultimate response of the network will not change. Now, the reason being is that this network is a bilateral network, and we have already discussed that in bilateral networks, um, you know, the response does not change with the change in direction of current and voltage, right? Okay. Now, <clears throat> let, sorry, uh, let I1, I2, and I3 be the currents in R1, R2, and R3 respectively. Now, step four, apply KCL at junction B. So the KCL equation is, now what will be the KCL equation here? What does KCL state? KCL states that the current coming to the junction, the total current coming to the junction is equal to total current leaving the junction. So this is leaving, this is coming. And this is also coming. So these two currents are coming to that particular junction and I2 is leaving the junction. So we can write here that I1 plus I3 is equal to I2. So this is lattice equation number, for example, uh, for example, one here, right? So this is equation number one. Now in step five, so let us revise our steps once again. In step one, what we'll do, we'll check the number of junctions in the network. So if there are n junctions, there will be n minus. If there are n junctions, then there are n minus one principal nodes. Because one of the nodes you have taken as a reference, right? Okay. So first is we'll check the number of junctions. Second is we will assume some voltage at every junction of the network. Third, we will take some current at every junction. We can take any direction of the current, either incoming or outgoing or whatever you want to take. That is totally up to you. Then we will mark those currents I1, I2, and I3 like this. Then after that, we will apply KCL on the junction and we will write the KCL equation. Now we will apply the Ohm's law to get the equivalent V by R equation of equation one. Now what is this? What does it mean? It means that I will replace this I1 with respect to its equivalent V by R. I will replace this I3 with respect to its equivalent V by R, let us say, 
and I will replace this I2 with its V by R. Now, how to take that V by R? That is also one very interesting point. Okay, how to take that V by R? Now, to take that V by R, to, to find that V by R, what we will do is we will replace that current of that branch with the ratio of net voltage of that branch to the net resistance of that branch. Okay, what is that V by R? That V by R is nothing, but it is the ratio of net voltage to the net resistance of that particular branch where we are determining the branch current. Right? So, I1 is equal to, now, now we have to see the direction of current. Now current is flowing from this point to this point. So it is flowing from voltage source to the junction B. So that means this point is at high potential because we all know if we follow the water analogy, water always flows from altitude to base means a place it which is at high altitude to a place which is at low altitude right okay so current flows we'll write here current flows from high potential to low potential that is uh, positive to negative, right? How so? That means this particular it it has it, this is at high potential, and this particular is at low potential. So that means I one will be written as E one minus V B. So this is the net voltage of this particular branch. Okay, this is the net voltage of this particular branch, right? So net voltage divided by net resistance. Now, what is the net resistance in this case? So the net resistance is R1 because the total resistance here is R1 only. So I'll write R1 here. So this is equal to 120 minus VB divided by uh, R1, which is 10 ohm. R1 is equal to 10 ohm and R2 is equal to 20 ohm and R3 is also equal to 10 ohm, right? Ohm. Right now we'll write I2 equation. Now what is I2? I2 is the current flowing in BD branch in this one. This is I2. So it is flowing from B to, so it is flowing from B to D. So this is positive, this is negative, right? So that means we will write VB and D is at zero potential. So it is equal to VB minus zero by R2, which is equal to VB by R2. And it is equal to VB by 20 ampere. So these are in amperes, right? Then lastly, we have I3. So what is the direction of I3 here? I3 is flowing from voltage to the junction B. So that means E2 is high and B is at low value. So it is E2 minus VB divided by 10. So it is 65 minus VB divided by 10 ampere. Now what we will do, we will put all these equal values in I1 plus I3 is equal to I2. So this will give me a new equation which is equal to the equivalent V by R's of the currents, equivalent V by R of the current, right? So that means what I'll do, right? It is I1 plus I3 is equal to I2. So I1 is equal to 120 minus, uh, it is 120 is yes, uh, 120, 120 uh, minus VB divided by 10 plus uh, 65 minus VB divided by 10 is equal to VB by 20. So this can be simplified here, 0, 0, 0 cancelled out. And taking the LCM, we'll get 2, 120 minus VB plus 2, 
65 minus VB is equal to VB, right? So this is the simplified equation here. So we can further simplify this equation as uh, 240 minus 2VB plus 130 minus 2VB is equal to VB. So it is minus 4VB plus 370 is equal to VB. So it is uh, minus 5VB is equal, we'll take this one on this side and this one on this side. So it is minus 370, so minus sign is cancelled out. So we have 5VB is equal to 370. VB is equal to 370 by 5, which is equal to 5 7 is 35 and uh, 74. So VB is equal to 74 volt. So this is VB is the node voltage. So hence by using nodal analysis, we can find out node voltage, right? Now, now in this particular, let us come back to this particular, you know, part. Okay, so now if we have to find out the branch current here, if we have to find out the branch current, how will we find out the branch current? Now, what is the branch current here? Branch currents are I1, I2, I3. So hence, hence I1 is equal to 120 minus uh, 74 divided by 10. So it would be um, something like, uh, uh, so it is 46 by 10, so it is 4.6 ampere. Then similarly, you have I2, which is equal to 74 by uh, 20. So it is, uh, you know, 3.7, sorry, uh, 3.7, 3.7 ampere. Then you have I3, which is equal to 65 minus 74, 65 minus 74 here divided by 10. So I3 is equal to minus 9 by 10. So it is minus 0 0.9 ampere. Now, what does it mean, guys? It means that uh, we have I3 as a negative. So the negative sign only indicates that the negative sign only indicates that the direction of current actually flowing in the branch is opposite to that you have assumed okay opposite to that what you have assumed negative sign of the current indicates that the actual direction of that current is opposite to what we have assumed, right? So this is the only difference. Otherwise, magnitude wise, there will not be any change. That means actually the current is not flowing in this direction actually the current is flowing in this direction and because of this reason means the voltage here is greater than the voltage 65 volt so this was the nodal analysis let us summarize this particular uh, you know uh, uh, topic so in this topic we have understood about the kcl what is kcl Okay, it is, you know, Kirchhoff's current law, also known as KJR, Kirchhoff's junction rule. So it is used at the junction of the given network to find out the voltage at this particular junction. And the method that we use is the nodal analysis. So we will be practicing more numerical on this. Today we have taken one junction circuit. Now next lecture we will take two junction circuits. So thank you so much guys.